You are connected to the internet. Actually, yeah. if you're in Garnet. Okay. I just I didn't delete this. So I'm really, I'd like to do it on one of these boxes. So we've got what is it? Oh, the, the password is. Okay. The password ID is. So it's it's. Bravo 4, Fox Uniform, November calling. CQSO 50, this is Golf Bravo 4, Fox Uniform, November. Uh, QRZ. Golf Bravo 4, Fox Uniform, November, 2 to uh, introductory remarks uh, of an sort of administrative nature. Um, first of all, uh, good morning to all the people watching on the uh, TV. Um, there have been a lot of questions about uh, whether we're going to be live streaming, and uh, I'm pleased to say that we are, so uh, good morning to our overseas <coughs> people who are currently outside the country, not in the room. Um, if you want to go on this evening's visit to the Kepler building, which is well worthwhile, um, there's a, a list on the flip charts board uh, to sign up to, uh, and I think it's at five o'clock, five o'clock, for about an hour. Uh, last night went on for an hour and 40 minutes, <laughs> um, and it, I think it was very well received. Uh, by that time, things had moved on rather. Um, so I'm pretty certain that the rule that tunership will become available, uh, at the very least the um, assembling plant up in Wales has got a huge amount of stock there which currently they haven't been paid for and I'm sure they'd be, like, be delighted to have funds. I've also explained to the liquidator in very plain terms that in fact the longer you wait to provide these chips the more people are going to have redesigned, they've done redesigns and you've lost the uh, market. Um, however it did fall on, on deaf ears I'm afraid. <laughs> So what were the next steps? Uh, well, we have this satellite launch very soon, but we don't have any means of individuals being able to receive satellite. Um, so we decided to develop a replacement funky dongle FCD. And we could have just have redesigned it and just um, produced the same thing again, um, which would have been the easy thing to do, except None of these tuner chips are the same. They're, they're all based on proprietary technologies. They all have different pinouts, different requirements. Um, there are parts on the top and the bottom of the board, as you'll see. There's, n there's not a huge amount of room left for, for much more if, you, if you've uh, had a look at that board. Uh, it's a six layer board, as I mentioned. This is the layout, and I'm really sorry for the ATV guys, because you're probably not going to be able to get the resolution right on that. This is the, the block diagonal. We keep the bias T on there. Have we got a pointer? No. No? Okay. Um, right, I'm gonna, gonna move over here then. Um, these are all the all the filters that uh, that I mentioned. The 11 filters on the uh, pre-selection filters. Uh, this is the HF pass, the uh, path, sorry. Uh, that goes to uh, four pre-selection filters. Um, <coughs> there's also uh, a, uh, the 32 megahertz up to 75 megahertz also goes through here as well, off to the tuner chip. Tuner chip is different from the other Lonix one because there are five separate 
band inputs, uh, RF inputs, whereas the E4000 chip only had a single RF input. So it's a little bit different the way that you uh, deal with this. Some of you may oh, have, have seen our announcement on the Unset VB, or those who get the Unset DL journal may have already uh, heard about our announcement that the German DLR basically uh, killed the P5A mission. We hoped to have a final decision uh, in early earlier this year, and uh, we even postponed our Amsat DL co uh, colloquium for that to uh, next month. Yeah, at the end of June, we received a letter from the DLR. Basically, the, the original words were the DLR program board comes to the conclusion that pursuit of the P5 idea is infeasible and also financially infeasible, not because of AMSA. We still maintain lots of contacts to various space agencies. We are still pushing and trying to accommodate phase 3E to an appropriate orbit, but this is not so easy. Gave the objective, they're saying whatever we do now, We've got to build something that gives us an easy FM kind of like repeater in the sky so that people that are not interested in satellites at this point because they feel it's too complicated and too difficult will have the opportunity of getting the taste payload, simple 70 centimeter uplink, 2 meter downlink, a linear transponder of 20 kilohertz bandwidth is, is being planned. Uh, well, that of course gives you multiple SSB channels uh, and at least two FM channels. So we're not going to stop you using FM and we won't stop you using um, SSB. Uh, it'll have obviously a command uplink and telemetry downlink, which will be in conjunction with the transponder. So it must probably be in the transponder passband. Our vision statement, which is even newer than our mission statement, is to deploy satellite systems. We are uh, anxious to provide a wider area and more continuous coverage. We just simply don't have enough satellites. So um, we also participate in human space missions and trying to support a stream of low Earth orbiting satellites. Uh, the final project I'm going to talk about is MARIA, Mars Lander Eris Robotics Exploration Activity. Again, um, the fruit of Mark Spencer's activities. On the left is a parallax based uh, little trans, uh, that in this case, that is the transmitter. What, what happens is, it's a system where we're trying to simulate remote control via RF of a robotics device. It's November 8, Mike Sierra in 8 ms and um, he and Mark Spencer and I have been bouncing packets through the International Space Station, making each other's robots move. <laughs> and uh, I'm in North Carolina, Mark Spencer's in Connecticut, and Matt Severin's in Michigan. So we're bouncing these things through. What students have to do in this, they would have to calculate angle so here's math here's trig <laughs> um, in terms of what distance would you have to go in which direction what turn would you have to make and go how far we use UISS as the the packet program right to bounce our packets and enter the text string so uh, you can bounce it and you see some stations there that's showing uh, the one in Connecticut and the one in Michigan <laughs> that, that Two fun cubes. We've got fun cube one, which is our own one U CubeSat that we're building, getting built with uh, uh, AMSAT NL and, uh, and ISIS over in Holland, and we're hoping to launch real soon. And that's uh, a complete satellite. There's also fun cube two on U cube, which Steve is the system engineer. I've lost Steve over there. You heard from yesterday. He's a system engineer for fun cube, uh, sorry, for U cube, on, on which fun cube two is a subsystem. So we left there is the the, the, the skeleton of the flight model of FunCube 1. You can tell it's the real one because it's got black uh, set, uh, structure and also a silvery structure because that's part of the material science experiment. No, obviously it's coming in at 9 six and six being a dongle. Yeah, so the, the, the yeah. dongle can receive it yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you tune your dongle lower it'll <laughs> appear up there but it'll still the sound the same because it's playing it after yeah. it's um, shifted it down into 1200. So it's just a dongle, yeah. nothing else? There's no yeah, 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 that's the dongle. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh,